Hi, I'm Jo from JH Leather, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I take my patterns and resize them for easy home printing. Now, I use Adobe Illustrator for all my patterns, and so that is what this video is gonna be based on. Now, I have already got a file open up here, and what we're gonna do is start by just printing directly out from Adobe Illustrator. So what we're gonna do is come up to File, and then go to Print. Now, there are a few different options that we have here. Now, if you haven't printed from Adobe Illustrator before, it might be that some of these options are grayed out for you. And if that's the case, you need to select your chosen printer and click Done. And then you can reopen the print dialog and everything should now be available to you. So a quick look around here. There are a few different options that we can do. Now, if you wanted to actually just print off an overview of your patterns, for example, if you've got measurements on them and you aren't actually intending to use them as like a pattern per se, but actually just draw off the back of them, what you can do is in our media size, I'm gonna select A4, I'm in the UK, that's what we use. And then in scaling, we're going to go to fit to page. And so you can see that's now been sort of selected and that I can print out and it will all fit on an A4 page. Now, we don't actually want to do that for this example. What we want to do is actually go to tile imageable area. And so that's gonna bring this dialog box up. So you can see here on our left-hand side, we've got a bit of a preview as to what it's gonna print out. And you can see these are going to be our pages and it's gonna print it out over six. Now, what we can actually do if we want is change the page orientation to see if we can get a better sort of printout where we're not using as much sort of paper. And for me, I can do. So I've just put that into the horizontal portrait mode <laughs> and instead of using six pages i'm now going to be using four to print out the entire pattern which is a lot better for me because it means there's going to be a bit more bit less faffing going on when it comes to cutting it out and sticking it together and so that's all i need to do so all i can do then is go to print and that is going to print out for me So if you're going to use the print imageable area option, then there's something to note is that there isn't any overlap on that. And so it can make it a little bit harder when you are putting your pans together once you've got them printed out. Now, however, we can actually use a different print method if you want to add an overlap. So rather than the tile imageable areas, we're gonna put tile full pages down in the bottom here. And then you can see we have a new little box come up sort called overlap and we can choose what we want our overlap to be and then once you've chosen what that is that can be whatever you want you just have to remember what that is uh, you can then press print and again and that's just going to print straight out for you so i don't actually like that method where you print them straight out from adobe illustrator because there are sort of some cases where you haven't really got much of a reference point when you're sticking them back together and also you have to be super super accurate when you're cutting them out whether you have an overlap or not and it can get a bit confusing because for larger pieces you may end up with just having like a single line across a piece of paper and trying to remember where that goes in the whole pattern and can be a bit confusing. If you are enjoying this video and would like to learn how to create more leather craft projects, then I have a whole range of printable PDF pattern packs and durable acrylic templates available for you to purchase via my website, jhleather.co.uk, or you can head to the links in the description. So I actually manually break down my patterns and then put them onto a printable area. And that way I know that they're gonna be accurate and they're also gonna be easy for me to piece together or for you guys to piece together because this is how I actually break down my patterns for the PDF pattern packs. So to do this, what I actually do is set up a brand new document. So what I'm gonna do is go to new file. And for me, again, I'm in the UK, I'm just gonna click A4 and I'm gonna have my size here as millimeters because that's what I work off. And we're gonna click create and that's going to open. And so what I'm gonna do is actually create a guide for myself. So I'm gonna select the rectangle tool and then I'm gonna put in the size that I want. Now for me, this has already come up because I've tested it out before. It's 170 by 247 millimeters. So I'm gonna press okay. I'm gonna make sure I get rid of the fill for that. And then what I want to do is just center that on my page and then what I'm going to do is right click 
and come down to make guides. So that is my page set up. So what I'm gonna do is duplicate that a few times. And to do that, I've just gone down to the artboard tool and I'm just gonna hold Alt and Shift, which he says. <laughs> and I'm just gonna press Alt and Shift and just copy those over. Um, I think I'm only going to need three for this and then what I'm going to do is create one sort of big one. So the big one or the big artboard is where we're actually going to make the patterns to. Um, it's just easier to do it on there. And so yes, so that's how I set my page up. Now if you were going to be using a US letter size, the safe printable area for that is six and a half inches by nine and a half inches and you just set it up the same to so draw your box right click and create it as a guide and then duplicate it a few times so you've got about enough pages for your pan to actually print off to so i'm going to go back here to my uh, shoulder bag i'm just going to copy and paste the main part of the bag into this file just so we can easily break that down so what i'm going to do is on the layers oh let's just get rid of that and that. So on the layers, I'm just going to lock that and you can name that as the guides. And that way you're not going to accidentally move any of your guides and let's come on a new layer. And so we're going to work on a new layer. So we're going to copy that in. So we have our pattern now. Okie dokie. So that is this sort of setup. Okay, so what we're going to do to make sure we can fit this onto our A4 pages, we're going to create another rectangle the same size. And then, oops, we can Let's just make that bigger so I can actually see the box and grab it with my mouth. And then we'll just make sure that's all even. And then we're just gonna go across and duplicate that box. And so I can see I'm gonna need this file to print out over three pages. Okay, so we can see that we've got our pattern here and we can see that it's gonna fit into three pieces of A4. So what I'm gonna do is actually delete both the first and the last one. So we've just got the box in the middle. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna select everything here and then we're gonna to go to our Pathfinder tool. And there we're gonna click these three dots and then we're gonna come down to divide. So we're gonna press that and now we've got something that looks like this. So what we're gonna do is then click on the whole thing and ungroup. And so we should now have our file into manageable sizes. So we've got one, and what I'm gonna do is just gonna group these as I go whilst I'm doing this, and select this end, group that, two, and we'll get rid of those. And we've got our middle section, group that, three so that is our file here now ready to go and be printed because it's the right size now so what i can do we'll just zoom out and we can just drag them so we've got piece one piece two and piece three and so what we can do is we can print that out and then oh, where's that gone so we can just make sure that they're central. And now this file might look a bit weird um, to you because this is actually the file that I use to print the acrylic for the shoulder bag, not the actual one that is used in the sort of pattern template pack. But what I can do now is I can print that off and I've now got my three easy to manage pieces because I've got a defined end where I actually need to cut and stick them all to. So I can then just go up and then print. And we are going to go to do not scale. And we're going to print, because we've got our four artboards down here. We've got one or four, so we've got page one, page two, page three, and then page four is actually blank because we haven't got anything on there now. So we're gonna go in the range, we'll print pages one to three, and then press print. And then that's gonna print out. And what we can do is then put that together and that is gonna be nice and easy to do.
And so that is the divide method. So another option that we have is if you are having issues with the divide tool, which can sometimes happen, we can actually use the shape builder tool. So what I'm gonna do is once again, we'll be using this uh, shoulder bag pattern. So we'll just copy that and bring that over. So duplicating your patterns is actually very important. Uh, if you accidentally, or if you make a mistake when you're splitting your pattern up and it's your main pattern, you're gonna have to just undo, 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 undo. Whereas if you had just duplicated it, you've already got it there and you're all good to go. So we've got our duplicate here. And what we're gonna do is, once again, with a rectangle tool, we're gonna get our A4 printable area. Now what I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna make this all one point because that's easy for me to see on the screen. And then we can divide that up. So we've got that right in the center now. So what we're gonna do is once we have that sorted and that's all lined up, we just move up to the top. We're actually gonna duplicate that because we're gonna do this in two parts. So we're gonna put one down the bottom, out of the way, and we're gonna select everything in this top section and press Shift M, and that's gonna take us to the Shape Builder tool. Now what we're gonna do is we are gonna delete this middle section, so we're gonna hold the Alt key, and you can see I've got a little minus next to my arrow now, and we're just gonna delete whoop, all of that. And let's just zoom in to make sure we've got everything. Delete that, there we go. And so that's that plan. And what we're gonna actually do is just ungroup these and then group them individually. So we're gonna have top end and the bottom end grouped. And then we're gonna basically do the same. So let's just move these guys out of the way a bit. And bring this pattern in. So we're gonna do the same. We're gonna select or shift M um, and then this time we're going to delete the other two ends. So we're just going to be left with our middle. And what we're going to do is, this is all sort of grouped funnily, so we're going to ungroup, we'll get rid of any weird artifacts that we have here, uh, which is just those two. And then we can select these and group them. And there again, we have our pattern split up and ready to go onto our pages and print out. So you can see this is split up slightly differently, but what if we line that all up, there we go. And if I just group that together, whoop, and then let's drag over this copy again. We can put that on, actually if I put that there and then just recolor this one make everything black. Now what we can do, whoop, and you can see that is an accurate cut down version of our main design. And then again, we can basically, let's get rid of that. We can ungroup it. And then we've got our three pieces that we can now easily print out. and use to make our patterns. And so those are the two ways that I actually break my patterns down, and they're the two ways I use the most. Now, depending on your pattern, you may find that the divide tool works better over the shape builder, and on some, the shape builder might work better than the divide tool, which is why I've shown you both, so you know how to do both, depending on your pattern and how it is working when it's breaking up. So the key thing here is to duplicate your pattern to make sure that if you do end up making a mistake or it doesn't turn out right, you have got your original file that you can quickly grab and duplicate once more and then go back to cutting it down into more manageable sizes. Now I use both of these methods a lot and it is the main one that I use when creating my PDF pattern packs because it is so much easier to put the pattern together afterwards. So whilst it does take a bit more time to set up, I do find that it is or it does give a more accurate final pattern once printed and then stuck together. Now I am sure there are other ways that you can go about creating your patterns into more manageable sizes and if you have an option that I haven't gone over in this video, please feel free to leave it in the comments to share your knowledge with other crafters. 
So that is where I'm going to leave this video. I hope you enjoyed watching and you learned something new. And if you did, please give this video a thumbs up to let YouTube know that you liked it and to help share this video with more crafters who might find this video useful. So thank you very much for watching and I shall see you in the next video.